The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN headquarters in St. Petersburg, Florida, 10 a.m. Eastern Time, Thursday, coming into that long weekend and quite a start we have to the market. Tom's going to be joining us after the first break. Right now, we get the Dow up 277 points, trading at 26,314. S&P currently positive by 32, trading at 29.19. NASDAQ positive by 111 points. That's a solid 1.4%. Trading at 79.67, we got the Russell up 20 points. That's a solid 1.4% as well. Trading at 14.93, and as I usually like to on the updates, we're going to start things off with how about that VIX now under 18 1793 as this market charges higher and the news of the morning the news of the session China responding with a little bit of quote unquote calm attitude so the quote is we firmly reject an escalation of the trade war and are willing to negotiate and collaborate in order to solve this problem with calm attitude spokesman for China's Ministry of Commerce says Thursday that news coming out at about 3 a.m. Eastern time you can see the spike across the board on the markets. We have the Dow trading just under 26,000 right prior to that news. Within the span of about 10 minutes, you got a 250 point bop in the Dow. NASDAQ much the same S&Ps before that news trading at 28.79 you trade all the way up to 29.09 right within 10 minutes and we're still 10 points now above that level in the S&P as well we got a lot going on this morning we got some earnings you got Abercrombie and Fitch trading lower you have Best Buy trading lower we have Dollar General up about 10 percent Burlington Coat Factory up 16 plus percent to talk about some of what we have going on in this market, let's jump over to our man Kevin Hinks from Thinkorswim, TD Ameritrade, right after the show every trading day, folks, 11 a.m. Eastern Time, fast market. You want to talk about defined risk. You want to talk about action in the market. Kevin Hinks, Alex Coffey, breaking down the whole trading day, every trading day. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Good to talk to you. How's everything? Everything's going good, man. Another day in a late August trading day market and calmness in the markets, Kevin. Where do we start? <laughs> you know, Tommy, you you just mentioned really what is the major catalyst today, and that was about 3 a.m. Eastern time, 2 a.m. Chicago time. China came out and said two things. They wouldn't immediately retaliate against the latest tariffs, and they needed or looking for some de-escalation in the trade war. So very soft friendly comments from China, and that, if you look at the one-minute chart of the, the S&P 500 futures, skyrocketed right after that. That lifted this whole market, and the thing we're telling our clients today is careful here because going into a holiday weekend, this market has some room to run, frankly. Oh, totally, man. I mean, it's a far cry, Kevin, from where we were last Friday, right? Really yeah. fear setting into the markets, maybe an escalation of things to come, and... Uh, Things have really calmed down, and you see the spokesman over in China really trying to add some calmness to that market it's on their front, and the market liking that, of course, in a big way. I mean, we're up 40 S&P points, folks, from where we were trading at at about 3 a.m. Eastern time. Um, yeah, the other thing I think the market liked, Tommy, and that really uh, sent bonds a little bit lower after they tried to rally was when the GDP number came out, 7.30 Chicago time, consumer spending, what drives as much as three quarters of the U.S. economy, they were looking for 4.3 percent in that GDP report, 4.7 percent consumer okay. spending. So when in doubt, Tommy, just lean on the U.S. consumer is carrying everybody. Oh, they have, man. That's that, that's been the way it is. And I'd say that's probably going to be the way it is in terms of you haven't seen that type of corporate investment. Right. We got the tax cuts, Kevin, a lot of that. They were hoping maybe some more investment hasn't quite come in. But consumers, they just continue to march on in this economy. And uh, talking about consumers, how about retail this morning, Kevin? We have a few headlines, man. I know you guys are breaking down some of the earnings sure. expectations coming down the line, whether it's Donner, Dollar General right now it was yep. up almost 10 
10%. Where are we sitting right now? Yeah, up about 9.2%, trading at 154. You got Best Buy pulling back a bit, and then even Burlington up almost 18%, and Guess up 21%. Um, just big yeah, numbers. Dollar General, Dollar General and Best Buy we actually covered on yesterday's show, so we took a good hard look at that, and some of the data that we talked to like Folio about, as you, if you saw on the show, Definitely. they were very positive on Dollar General. So that matched our data nice. that we looked at. So, yeah, that's one of those times where their data was right on, and that's how we traded Dollar General. So we're, we're going to look at that again today. There's more. It gets a little light on retail. We, we, we've got a couple names. we got Workday, Campbell Soup coming out tomorrow morning, and then we've got Ulta. The, uh, okay. the, the, the Butte Cosmetics the giant. Uh, re retailer. Yeah, so they're a giant. So we'll cover that today, too. Three big names we're, we're, we're going to be covering today. Man, I know. And this Bond story, Kevin, of course, we're all familiar. It just keeps marching on in terms of uh, the number of articles that I have been seeing popping up. And as you'd expect when we have this yield curve that's now inverted for the 2 to the 10 and you have Secretary Mnuchin yesterday, right, talking about floating maybe the 50-year and the 100-year um, and maybe just putting out some kind of a feeler to see what the market reaction is as that hits the tape. And, um, you know, at rates where they are, folks, right now at 2%. And, you know, you talk about whether it's infrastructure, the amount of debt we have. Not a bad idea, in my opinion, to really, you know, access those markets if you're going to spend them in the government, put out 2% bonds, 100 years. If somebody's going to buy it, man... Um, we've talked right. about it before, right? I'd be a seller. I'd be a seller of a hundred-year bond in my in my personal if for checking no account. Other reason, right? If for no other reason, Tommy, to just to test the appetite, definitely for what it what it would be. And if you're gonna, you know, the U.S. markets have the most quality and the most demand for their 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 long-term paper. So why not just test the market with with, with something that could absolutely help this government? Definitely, definitely. Um, so what else? I know you guys are going to be talking about some of those earnings with Alta. be interesting to see how they come out. You know, I think the last earnings was a Kylie Jenner talking about her brand in there and what they put out um, because we're at the near end. I remember when we were talking on Tuesday, I believe it was, Kevin, or Monday, we only had like 13 yeah. S&P stocks left in the earnings. So we're, we're really at the tail end with only a handful of stocks coming out with their earnings. And um, it's remarkable, man, the volatility we have gotten coming into two days left in the summer, Labor Day on Monday. And you had a VIX yesterday, Kevin, at 21.64. And just like that, we're now sitting at 17.76 as maybe the market's saying, okay, de-escalation from China, where we got two days left in the trading day, and the volume pretty light yesterday, and you're probably only going to see that slip off today and, of course, into Friday, into that long weekend. Yeah, pretty interesting. All the risk-off assets started on the downside this morning. Bonds uh, and, and the VIX and even the Japanese yen are still on the downside. But gold, oh, gold man, was right, down this morning right. and has rallied all the way back to unchanged. I think that's one of the more interesting trades of the day, that gold with a market up big and all the other risk-off assets down, gold hanging in there today at some, you know, at some historically high levels, frankly. So I agree, man, that, because that's gold, kind of one we've of the seen it. Of the day. Yeah, we've seen it trade like inverse with the market, Kevin, right? You know, and you yep. see it. I have the gold contract up here on the Thinkorswim platform right now at 3 a.m., folks. You had gold up at almost 1560, and it pulls back hard to 1544, but then boom, from 7 a.m. until 9 a.m., you traded $10 up to 1554, and that's as the market continued to trade higher. Well, Kevin, it's man, we, we appreciate it. We look forward to the show at. 11 o'clock and you have a great long weekend man safe long weekend we look forward to talking to you next week great talking to you tommy have a great day you too man take care stay tuned folks we're coming right back if you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. 877-927-6648. Uh, we have the uh, Dow Industrials up 247. NASDAQ's up 105. S&Ps are up 27. And uh, Slow day in the market, man, as it's been for August as we come into the holiday weekends. There's no doubt. And, you know, if you, if you get over and you take a look at this, folks, what you're going to see... Um, now, we're certainly, we're, we're in a range. The thing that's amazing, though, there's no doubt. That, Talk about a range. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, last week we were down on the Dow at 25,500. Well, you're up 800 points from that. Yeah, you know? and you can see, I mean, you don't have to be a technician, right, guys? I mean, top of the range, 26.5. Yeah. Bottom of the range, 25.5. Nothing right. like a thousand point range. Um, can we jump over to the S&P just to yes. see how that range? So because let's see. We'll do the spot. That's perfect. Because yeah. uh, the Dow, of course, can skew things with... Right. Uh, but just mammoth here as well. Man. Yeah. It, it, nice and simple. Tw 295, and we'll call it, whether you call it maybe 285 on the conservative side, almost down to 282.50, um, you know, on the bottom. And that's every every point here is 10 points. So when you're talking about 10 points, you're talking about 100 S&P points. Right. And you're really almost talking about 125 S&P points from about, in the SPY at least, right? Looking yeah. at, you know, the upper end near almost 295 and the lower end, call it this notch right here, which would be 282.50. And, hey, watch this. If you, if you do this, folks, uh, with the futures, you're going to see on Sunday night how much lower we were. Okay. Look at, I mean, yeah. right? You see what I'm saying? That's yes. Like, on Sunday night, you had gone all the way down to 2810. Nothing oh, well, like, there you go. I was just going to say 110 points. Almost. Right. Yeah. I know. Yep. Now, that being said, guess what? You're coming right up to where the market keeps selling yes. off. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. And I heard you and Kevin talking, and this is, this is Definitely. what gold has going for it, folks. As, as the bonds do, each and every time that the, the market pulls back a little, it, gold is creeping. Each time the market is up, gold won't give it up. Yeah. Uh, so it's going to get intriguing here watching it. You get 270,000 contracts, which is big contract volume. Okay. So you're pushing highs with, with volume. Yeah. Um, can and, you go closer just yes. so, everybody, so for the same? Because, you know, you can see that uh, 3 a.m., right? So there's where the 
announcement comes from the Chinese spokesman. Okay. Um, talking about, you know, some calm attitude. No retaliate. We're not going to yeah, retaliate. Right, calm down. We'll, right. we'll calm it down. And you saw the market spike higher. So you saw a gold spike lower. They've yeah. been a little bit inverse, but that's where you yeah. get the duration. That's but right. then, like I was saying to Kevin, from 7 a.m., just we're, shakes it off. We're trading at 1542. By 9 a.m., we're trading at 1555. Right. And the market continued higher on that whole time. Yes. So that's where you get that separation. It where is. Gold gained strength at a time when the market's gaining strength. So. And yeah. if we go over to the bonds, you know, you're going to see you get a slight back off, but not much, man. No. I mean, you know. All things considered, right? Yeah. Yeah. You get, <coughs> you're at 131 right now. Uh, the 10 year. This probably went to a lower yield last night because it looks like we got to slightly ab above 144. One looks like the low. Yeah, so. We're sitting at 151 on that spike probably from the market. Look at that. Trend. Yeah, so we hit 14425 and the low right now is 14409. Okay. Um, By a hair. Yeah, exactly. And good old King Dollar. So King Dollar, folks, uh, right now basically will not give it up. Uh, now, the volume is contracting dramatically again, so we'll see where this shakes out. But, uh, you know, once it got over this again, now look at that volume, though. This is sick. You know, we, we had come yeah. down with 29,600. Um, Monday, it had some volume in it. We, okay. we did 18,000. And that was the big day was Friday, because that yes. was, like I mentioned to Kevin, that, man, right. things seemed a little worrisome. Oh, that yeah. It was about to fall apart. Right. And then, guess what? Tuesday, <laughs> Wednesday, Tuesday, you only did 9,700. Yesterday, it did 10,300, and we're at 7,100. Well, so. didn't you hear on Monday, man? They called Trump over the weekend. He said, Mr. President, we need you to come to the table and do a deal with us. Yeah. yeah. Well, and you, well, something that I suspect we all should keep paying attention to, though, is not though, is paying attention to, is Mnuchin, like, saying that, okay, we're not going to intervene in the dollar. There's too much talk about intervening in the dollar. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and you better keep that on the top of your mind because yeah. most times that conversation is off the table, yeah. not on the table. There's a lot of conversations that are usually off the table that are somehow on the table. <laughs> There's no the, doubt. Recently. And you know, uh, the. 50, 100-year bond in the... Yeah, uh, why not, man? Oh, the, the, hey, listen, there's no doubt. I want a 100-year mortgage at 2%. Sign uh, me up, man. Totally. Man. Yeah, <laughs> what's my payment on that? <laughs> oh. Right? Yeah. Seriously. There's no doubt. I never pay it off. And, I, you know, the so I just heard with the... the So picture this, folks. And, you know, we've heard this a million times that there's so many funds going after yield. Yes. That there's more money than there is yield. Okay. And... It was only, it was 2017, so okay. 2019. Yes. When they sold that 100 year bond. Argentina. Argentina. Yes. That's 40 cents on the dollar today. Yes. You know, so. That seems like an easy trade going back. That right. is such a haircut, man. I mean, and. and we said it at the time, who's buying it? I know. And, and now it'd be one thing in the U.S., right? Yeah, you could buy that, maybe, yeah. maybe, right? Yeah. But Argentina, man. I know. You know, like really, you have faith and confidence. And for you, a and, century, and you bought it on, a, on, on yeah. at full price. Yeah, for a century. So you're talking about like when you got grandkids and great grandkids <laughs> that you're confident that yeah. they're going to be paying that back. Right. Argentina. Right. I mean, I wouldn't have confidence in almost anybody for a hundred years with what can happen in political turmoil. I mean, you want to go back to 1919, where yeah. America was, to 2019, right? I mean, that's like a hundred years. The world changes dramatically oh in that time. So. Uh, yeah. In a huge way. Yeah. Let's go take a look at some of the higher volume equities, and I expect we're going to have a low volume market out here. You yeah. know, we're kicking into Labor Day. Sure. Um, oh, look at that! Oh my God! We'll find out what Oli's bargain is. But <laughs> Oli's bargain is down twenty one yeah. bucks. And I, I happen at, to see them on the at fifty six. I mean, maybe maybe do they have some earnings? We'll see. Oli's bargain. Well, I've never even heard of this company. So. Operates chain of retail stores that offer brand name products at discounts. Maybe Dollar General's eating their lunch. Lowe's 54, the high. Is Dollar is, General's up today. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. So, revenue wise, look at that big company. I mean, they they take bad. in 325 million a quarter. Um, look at that growth. Three year growth, 17%. Oh. But what have you done for me lately? Yeah. Oh, not, not much over the last 90 days. It done, seems. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Wow, look at this. So. This is a classic, too. You got, uh, that's December. So here's another one that's back to December now. So December has a high, high, high volume low. Yep. And does that come off? Oh, watch this, folks. Okay. So this also, so you had a high volume low in December, $59.72. You made a high with $15 million, and this is what's always dangerous. And look how you come off the high. Sure. $26 million. Yeah. What happens there, folks, is that what I've seen, when you come off the high with volume, 
What you don't know is that, okay, who's selling? But it seems that the folks that are the largest owners in the equity get out. And so then what ends up happening is that even as it goes down, they're not there coming back in. Like yeah. if you've decided that, okay, you had a nice position, your position started at 23, yep. going back to 2016. Sure. I'm saying, hey, man, you know, I think this thing's going to slow down. I'm at 56. I'm at $60. Yeah. I'm going to take my bread, Definitely. and I'm not coming back in. Definitely. You know, so yeah. that is uh, always a big problem. Oh, man. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Oh, natural gas, right? Oh, we sure do. Yeah. Let's see if we can get a quick feel for where the market is as before we come in. So we get the EIA numbers coming into 1030. We'll jump into the commodities. Where are we in natural gas? We're sitting at 227. We're looking at the October contract. Talk about a little pop. Five cents uh, move, yeah. Yeah. Jumps up all the way. I wonder what this had to do. I saw that the Trump administration considering rolling back regulations on methane. And I wonder if that plays into the natural gas contract. Uh, but we'll get those numbers in three minutes. Natural gas into 227. Quite a little pop this morning already. Big time. Dow. Dow Industrial's up 260. Nasdaq's up 109. S&P's up 28. Come right back, folks. folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, so natural gas rose 60 BCF. Yeah, it looks like the median estimate was around a rise of 57. The Bloomberg survey had a rise of 58, pretty close to in line. And where are we at? 
<laughs> no real reaction. Uh, I say no real reaction. Drop the penny pretty quickly because a little bit more, right? Yeah. So three BCF, three billion cubic feet, maybe more than they were looking for, but compared to the move we had this morning, not too not too ridiculous of a move sitting right at that 227 price point right now. And um, so kind of what I referenced going into that break, we'll pull this article, there we go. Um, so news coming out this morning that the Trump administration, the EPA, to roll back regulations on methane, which of course, I say of course, but maybe not all are aware, a potent greenhouse gas. So interesting stuff in here in terms of, so the Trump administration said to announce on Thursday it tends to sharply curtail the regulation of methane emissions, a major contributor to climate change, according to industry officials with knowledge. The EPA, in a proposed rule, will aim to eliminate the federal requirements that oil and gas companies install technology to inspect for and fix methane leaks from wells, pipelines, and storage facilities. Interesting here that the major energy companies actually against this, because we'll dig down any further, they've spent millions of dollars already to put those in place be in line right. with those regulations well, it doesn't um, make much sense that you have a well and you get stuff leaking out of it either <laughs> it's like okay really especially when so i'm scrolling a lot here but to dig down so here we go overall carbon dioxide i think we're all familiar with yeah. this one um is the most significant greenhouse gas but methane's a close second it lingers in the atmosphere for a shorter period of time but packs a bigger punch while it lasts by some estimates methane 80 times the heat trapping power of co2 in the first 20 years and methane currently makes up nearly 10% of the greenhouse gas emissions in the U.S., a significant portion coming from the oil and gas sector. So I don't have a huge fundamental understanding of the natural gas market, but I'm wondering whether that putting some volatility um, into the price this morning. I'm yeah. not sure, but nonetheless, yeah. That'll, that'll yeah. <laughs> I know, right? Oh, my God. Pretty Probably. remarkable. So we go over here. Let's go. I want to take a look at the uh, these chips, NVDA. So the, the chips... Once again, yeah, they don't have the juice behind them, though. Interesting. They get the price behind them. Like, NVIDIA is up five and a half bucks, but this is still a range, too. You know, you're coming yeah. into a 14 million, it's down 2.8. Now, that might have some decent volume out here today. Um, the banks, XLF. Now, the banks still are in tough shape. Oh, I see. This is already going to fail. This is going to be interesting watching this. So, you got the XLF today up to a 26.78. Look at look at the last time. The downdraft high was twenty six seventy nine. Almost I mean, by that, a penny. Isn't that weird? A I penny. Know. I know. It's like, Almost. Okay. We'll see. So we'll we'll see how that shakes out. Meaning, but it looks like it's going to fail out here today, right at the highs One too. Point. JP Morgan, there JPM. How's Jamie Dimon doing this? Morning? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's doing okay. He's holding price. Yeah. That's up a buck ninety seven. That's the difference. He's holding price. And let's go see what Berkshire is doing, particularly. So Berkshire, folks. Um, what ends up happening? That's up a buck seventy-three. Now that's testing the highs, and so what? You, what you have here is this, and this is you, you want to talk about something that's deviant, folks. Okay, is that we have the hurricane that's coming into Florida, right? So I remember the first couple times that this happened, and you're thinking that all the insurance companies are going to get smoked, yes. right? Because they have liability out sure. there, right? What ends up happening is that. Oh, and by the way, this is, uh, congratulations, this is our anniversary at Katrina. Today. Oh, is it? August Today, 29th. August 29th. Oh, I don't even want to ask you what year. <laughs> uh, don't even tell 14 years ago. You're 2005? 2004? 2004. That's I, that 15 years ago. <laughs> is that 15? Yeah, 2004. Sorry, that's, I know. 2004. Oh. We'll talk about that in a second, Seriously. folks. But uh, that's, that's a trip. That sure is. Um, so, <laughs> the, the Berkshire Hathaway deal, right, and, and the insurance companies in general, what I've seen is that when a hurricane gets hit, they go down for like a day, and then they go up dramatically. Yeah. Because what happens, like the east coast of Florida has not got a major hurricane in 14 years, which does sound so weird, okay? But that's the I'd bottom line. I'd, I'd lo okay, I, I'd love to hear how we'll that's pull classified. It up. I, I know, so, well, believe me. I, I, I'd okay. love to hear how that's classified. So, so, get the, <laughs> so get the gist of it. Pretty sure, okay. W what ends up happening is that when they have to pay off, then they go to the regulators and up the rates sure. again. No, no, that for you know? sure. Yeah. So it's it's pretty intense. Yeah, 2005. So maybe so. it was 2005, 14 years ago. <laughs> oh, my Katrina. God. Katrina. Yeah. We're out there at Harris, the Harris in New Orleans. Yeah. Right there with Odyssey Marine Exploration, right? Right. That poor company, as in they were launching an exhibit, a whole it, new. It was Odyssey Marine Day, folks. Yeah. 
And remember the parade? Yeah. That was the parade. Yeah, they had a whole exhibit in terms of they had found that shipwreck, so they, yeah, had taken a, the gold. they had taken a bunch of the artifacts, created a whole exhibit in New Orleans to yeah. kind of, you know, extend the lifeline of the profitability oh, yeah. of that discovery, build a right. whole exhibit of it in New Orleans. That was opening weekend for the exhibit. Uh, I'm not sure if it's still there. Maybe it is. No, it's I'm not. not sure. No, it closed like two years later. Never. Okay. It, it would end up. It just. It, yeah. yeah. And I mean, was, New Orleans was, was almost closed for right, a year or two. Exactly. Right. And uh, the reason they they had done it like that too, folks, is that there's an exhibit. Max, someone that had found a bunch of gold. There's an exhibit down in Key West, yes, and there was right. already another one there. So it's a it's yeah. a good tourist deal. Right. You know, right. It, it would have been. Has it would have been. You're a good looking tourist, for things yeah. to do while you're in the city, right? Yeah. You know, you you skip through there, see the gold. I remember they had one huge gold bar in there. I think, right? Just like they have one yeah. in Key West and so yeah. forth. Yeah. 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 14 years, man. Holy cow. Thank goodness we were doing a little gambling at Harris because we had some cash, folks. And that's yeah. the lesson. You get ready for these storms, have some Ooh. cash, right? No yeah. ATMs, people trying to trade diamond necklaces, diamond earrings, that? watches just to get a ride. Now. Um, nobody had cash. Thankfully, we had a little cash. I made a little money at poker the night before. We had some cash on us from the gambling. No, <laughs> hey, life is crazy how it works out sometimes. Uh, and and we were about the only ones out in the street, too, by the way. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. All right. Yeah. We weren't the only many, ones in the street. People? Why do we have to yeah. go? Oh, we, we were not the only ones in the street in New Orleans. There, there no, weren't a folks, lot of people. We were not the only people in the streets no. in New Orleans, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Because just to put, we, we were fortunate that we actually weren't in the streets. To put, that's why I'm. No, like, I'm talking about the night before. Yeah, yeah. but that's the, the yeah. you know that was, that was a bad deal, man. That's <laughs> we were lucky that we we're staying in a Hilton high rise because the whole French Quarter, of course, right. got shut down. You had families staying in the French Quarter that those hosp those hotels just were not willing to take the liability of housing people. Right. So they literally just closed, kicked people out. You see families walking around with their yep. bags, kids. Right. Nowhere to go. Right. Um, and what happened, well, we were so lucky that the, the Hilton had folks, so it was picture, you get the outside of the Hilton, but their conference room was in the middle. Yeah. And that was all blocked off. So, so yeah, you know. they had everybody had to come out of their rooms yeah. and go to the conference room because it was kind of contained. They were worried about right. the windows, the, right. the, the the wind gusts there. Exactly. You actually had to sign a waiver if you wanted to stay in your room. And of course, there were some people who couldn't use the stairs as much. They were worried. Yeah, um, we were very fortunate, though. More fortunate than most men being in a big hotel like that. Oh, so. there's, there's no doubt. Yeah, hopefully this storm. Uh, and as, as we're talking about it, why not? Just because I have the cone up here somewhere. There we go. So there's Dorian. Um, looks like. And we this got is a strange one for us in Florida. It's going from uh, the east to west. Yeah. Which, because you usually know, it's got they, a left hook on it. Usually yeah. they come and they loop into the Gulf. I say usually. Or, or they go right up. Yeah. yeah. Or they'll come up um, the Atlantic coast. Um, but this one, the cone, of course, from the, yeah. the potential areas it could hit. And hopefully, because, you know, the Gulf, some of the warmest waters, waters yes. out there, the Atlantic, still warm when you get into, you know, late August, early September. But no hopefully doubt. that keeps it in a two yeah. or three. By get the, it out of here. By the time it touches land, it's down to a two or one. Put all that good white light. Send that, send that baby out to sea, That's you? right, man. So, as we're talking, the S&P's just, just pulled back uh, right. eight points. Dow, Dow up 196, NASDAQ up 83, S&P's up 22, we'll come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. 
Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Dow. Dow is up 229. NASDAQ's up 92. S&Ps are up 25. And if we go over to those, uh, the interest rates, folks, and we take a look at the curve right now. Let's talk a little yield inversion. Yeah. Little yield curve. And what you're going to see uh, is that you get a nice inversion here. And we yeah. this is the third day. Okay. Yeah. So now we're, we're banging out uh, 72 hours or whatever. Yeah. So you get the 10-year yielding 1.501. Yep. The two-year banging 1.516. Pretty remarkable, okay. man. Um, and, you know, the the cool thing about markets in general is that you get plenty of propaganda out there and fake news and, and all of this that, that the administration lays out. And Navarro, Peter Navarro, we're going to bring this up right now, uh, is basically, uh, he's been out there for quite some time saying that, uh, it really doesn't matter. But Along with many others, right? Yeah. Saying, no, no, no recession. Don't listen to the yield curve. Right. That doesn't mean anything. So I saw a tweet one of my buddies shared with me this morning I found pretty interesting I want to talk about. So it doesn't matter who this Twitter account is. This is right. an opinion columnist for The Post. But they're talking about, as, and this is just fact, Nafaro keeps going on TV saying he knows the in inverted yield curve, which he calls flat, and I guess he has, doesn't signal recession because he, quote, wrote several books on the efficacy of the yield curve as a leading economic indicator. And you want to hear what he wrote, folks? But here's the book. This is the books, okay? So listen to and, this. And this, this is where yeah. details matter, okay? So the first one. The master cyclist's favorite forecasting tools. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So, and I'm going to read a little bit above the red just yeah. to give it some context, but we're going to go through a few of these because it's remarkable what he actually said. And this is what you should be listening to because this is what he was saying when, when he, he actually wrote a book and he wasn't just out there for his king. Right. Okay. Well, to you, put when you hear this, you're not going to believe it. Actually. So he says, as for the flat yield curve observed in 1989, every inverted yield curve must go through a flat phase. However, not every flat curve inverts. Still, a flat curve is an only slightly weaker signal of recession, although it predicted all of the past six recessions within an eight-quarter horizon. It also had two false signals. Okay, not too yep. dramatic, right? right? It gets better and better. Given the yield curve's excellent forecasting track record, it seems truly remarkable that so many corporate executives chose to ignore its strong recessionary warning signals leading up to the 2001 downturn to see why the claims of CEOs such as John Chambers that quote the brightest people in the world didn't see the recession coming are so hollow well who's the hollow one right now okay yeah. just consider a figure we don't have the figure but it charts the ominous progression of the yield curve from its normal quote shape in 99 of June of 99 to the flat curve in November of 99 and finally to the recession signaling inversion in March of 2000. Here's the best one. Now watch this one. Yeah, this the is... broad forecasting point we can extract from this very typical scenario is this, colon, 
the yield curve is such a powerful forecasting tool precisely because it embodies the collective wisdom of millions of highly sophisticated investors quite literally putting trillions of dollars on the table in highly intelligent speculative bets on the direction of the business cycle that is about as far from a Ouija board forecasting as you can get. So which one are you going to believe? A guy touting for his king who can't handle anyone who disagrees with him or what he wrote actually when nobody was, you know, he wasn't accountable He's a good to writer, anybody. Man. That's, that's, I'm surprised he has the, you know, astuteness to actually write like that, yeah. to be fair. That's, but um, yeah. so keep that in mind when you see, you know, the president's cheerleaders out there talking about don't listen to the yield curve, folks. Yeah. You better be listening to that yield I, curve. Listen, okay. There's, there's no it's doubt. It's staggering that. what we're going through on the yield curve in terms of this is not normal stuff when you start talking about inversions right. and then at the same time talking about 50 year talking about 100 because they're so low talking about the feds gonna maybe drop 50 basis points mid-meeting right i mean it's yeah. just and then you have a s p dividend yield above the bond yields i mean just everywhere across the board not good signs no no and you know the, 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 the i think the hard thing here is to figure out like just that he was saying this eight quarters because that's like yeah it's you, usually it, ahead by yeah. a year to two um, it, six it's quarters, leading, eight quarters. Right. it doesn't mean it's going to fall apart tomorrow it's but yeah. like okay man you know it's pretty amazing well we, we all just got to watch it that's the there's bottom line there's a million line. things going on right. but it's important to see that type of commentary to contrast it oh, for with sure. just you know Cudlow out there Navarro out yeah. there and all they're saying is everything's cool re-elect Trump all right so be aware of what actually gets said when they're not in a political position because all they're talking about right now is politics right okay so just be aware of that but when it's you masked it's it's well it's masked because yeah. they represent themselves as exactly. you know financial right. but right. when they were actually in that role of financial oh, without being sure. in the administration right. they said very different things right so keep that Big in mind yeah and let's go back over to the S&P so this is going to get interesting here you know uh, this is going to be this is where you got right up to the highs again and you know someone someone unloaded on this thing look at this thing yeah. uh, you know we have a 10 minute up there and someone unloaded well in 10 hey. minutes they unloaded 79,000 contracts that's a big number man it's a half a percent 50, yeah. 15 S&P points yeah 2920 to 2905 in any other universe that's usually a mammoth move right yeah but in context of where the market's been moving man Nah. Yeah, looks like a blip on the chart. And you know, folks, if you get this is all. Let's see. That's we're, 3 a.m. We're, we're, we're actually inside it. Once you get inside this okay. 2911, you know, sure. I mean, rejecting it right now. But that yeah. means there's game down to the bottom again yep, too. That was the quick spike at 3 a.m. Yeah. Um, and you can yep. see if you just take the volume characteristic, that was the spike was at 45,000 contracts, down track. That's a big one. 79,000. Yeah. You know. Definitely. And you know, we'll see how this uh, baby shakes out. Let's go to the NQs for a second. NQ. U nine. Yep. Of course, I knew it was going to be there, but let's see. Oh yeah, the NQs are heavier. Twenty-two thousand contracts going into eleven. Okay. So seventy-six sixty-eight. <laughs> it's right there. Oh, uh, this. We're going to dig into these, folks. This is going to get interesting. This is. Uh, oh boy. Hey, just when you think, I mean, to, to bring people back again, where it's like the fall apart at the end of 2018, that was Christmas Eve. Yeah. Okay? So don't think like Friday right. before Labor Day that, that all right. is well. Um, every single point that we pull up on that chart still to this day where we look at those lows of December of 2018, Christmas Eve, you know? Yeah. So and that was a shocker. Yeah, yeah. And that's why. So right. be aware that this right. is a different market, man. If right. things really pick up, I mean, Twitter's open all day today, oh, right? Yeah. I think so. So be aware. Yeah. Yeah. Wild, man. Yeah. So uh, let's look at this. Uh, my man Dave White saying that uh, he had Tim Cook has sold uh, stock for the first time this year. Let's see. What did he sell? Let's oh, see. boy. Insider selling, huh? That seems to be a uh, commonality recently. I was reading an article, I think, when I did the program on Tuesday. Yeah. Insider selling, reaching a level that we haven't seen since 2007. Something really? about $10 billion, oh. $10 billion, and I forget whether it was a day, a week, whatever okay. it was. Now, granted, the market is so much higher than it was in 2007. Yeah. So it wouldn't mean as much 10 billion being sold today as it would be 10 billion being sold in 2007. But yeah. we're at those levels. Last time we saw them, insider selling, right. 2007. And and, and then right. you got Apple, that'd be interesting. Yeah, there it is right there. Hey. Um, 854,000 filing date, what's that? Two Just days ago. Um, yeah. Two days ago. 
But I'm not sure if that says, let's see. So it's, uh, he's got a quote up there. The Cook sold 265,000 shares on August 22nd, okay. 26, excuse me. So maybe that is the filing date that before yeah. this he had I got an it. additional 200 and yeah. he sold stock after. 54.7 million bucks. Hey. Are you a buyer or a seller, folks, when the CEO is a seller? Think about that. Seriously. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. Stay right there. Tommy and I are going to be coming right back. We have the Dow up 212, Nasdaq up 86, S&P's up 22. Come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, six and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Dow. Dow's up 218. Nasdaq's up 90. S&P's are up 23. And we're just talking about Tim Cook. But guess what? There's a lot of other insiders that are selling just like 2007. So. Party like it's 1999 Ooh. or like it's 2007. It's pretty uh, heavy, man. So, yeah, I talked about this earlier in the week, this article from Tuesday, I guess. But just to highlight, if you weren't listening to the program on Tuesday, so corporate insiders have sold an average of $600 million of stock per day, per day. in August. That's going to go up with Tim Cook selling $54 million himself. Yeah. Um, August on track to be the fifth month of the year, which insiders selling tops $10 billion. The only other time that has happened was in 2006 and 2007. And, uh, yeah, that's it. And you that's know, the storyline. I, I had right? said to you when I pulled that up, and I remember that specifically, folks, and they were selling 
a good year before the market crashed. Yeah, it too. does. It referenced 2006, yeah. crashes 2008, yeah. right? And exactly. it's pretty interesting when you have the yield curve inversion. People saying the same thing. Listen, it forecasts it, but it forecasts it's a year, year yeah. and a half, 18 months out. Um, kind of eerie. And I again, know. the only thing to consider is that from where the market was in 2006 to where it is now, insiders would probably have to be selling 20 to 25 billion right. to make it comparable. But nonetheless, it's that's something you should have on your radar. One of the Oh, yeah. 2,754 things you should have on your radar right. every day. This you know, It's just like, you know, I haven't heard anyone said yet that they're going to be a buyer of the 100-year bond if we do it. <laughs> but there'll yeah. be someone. There will Everyone, be. There you know, will be. And they're yeah. talking about, you know, if you have liabilities going out that far, yeah, that's you know, certain maximum. situations, yep. right, you can, you know, that would make sense. But to put that product out there, you need a sustained demand. And that's where there's a lot of questions whether you'd have a sustained demand like you have in the 30 year, trillions of dollars going through it. Would that transfer to something like a 50 year and 100 year? I think that's they're putting those feelers out. Oh, they they're putting them out. Oh, yeah. We'll see. Stay right there, folks. We got fast market coming up next. And we get our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. I'll be back this afternoon. Okay. We'll see that's where right. we are by 4 o'clock. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Go get them, folks.